So I put up a few sails, but I may have gone a little bit too far. Uh, that's up to you guys to decide. Welcome to the Mischief. I'm Valen, and this is Rustic Waters 2. As you can see, I've got quite a few number of sails. I went through almost all of my uh, aluminum. I'm actually almost about to run out of water here as well in the process of doing so. But uh, it's it's been fun uh, just kind of setting up this giant massive wheel. Uh, I did test it. It worked, but I wanted to show you guys a few things. So first, let's get over here and I can actually demonstrate what is going on. Uh, all right. So uh, first and foremost, I'm on version 108 now instead of 104 so some things have changed i can actually put my uh uh what is it my goggles engineer's goggles in my curio slot for for starters uh, i also have a ton of quest items that uh, are now available uh, in here for rewards that i need to claim but uh, it's there there's been a lot of bug fixes and things like that so hopefully things will work better and with that out of the way let's look at this i, I put down a couple radial chassis I wanted the entire thing to stand off of this glass. So it's actually, you can see that there's like a dirt block and then there's the, the giant turbine that I've kind of put in place here that's going to be my power source for uh, hopefully all of my stuff. I don't really want to have to make this thing any bigger because I, I don't know that it'll look any prettier. I am going to need a windmill bearing. There we go. And with this, I should be able to put it in place here. Oops. Not to worry, let me take this, grab that, and then I can sneak click and it will replace, it'll uh, switch the side that's facing to the opposite side when you place it. That's nice that I have the goggles on now. When I look at this, I can instantly see stuff. And by holding the wrench, you can see rotational uh, direction is clockwise. Uh, don't right click like I just did like that. You want to scroll with your mouse wheel. <laughs> there we go. And it is now counterclockwise, which means it should go this way, which is the way I want it to go. Anyway, uh, let's grab this framed glass that I have here, dig out that dirt block, replace this. Bye bye dirt block. And I think that should be good. Nice. And then all the water ooh, should fill in. Did I... Looks like I've got a few that I'm going to need to stick in place. All right, let's try this again. All right, so it looks like those ones up there are going to need some stickum on it. Well, I've, I've got slime balls, but it looks like I'm going to need super glue, which requires aluminum plates. Oh, boy. And I only I think I only have four. All right, well, let me take out my hammer here, and I can use this to convert these into plates. Then put this back on my belt. Oh, it's so nice having all these different like storage options for tools and stuff on me. Funny thing, I actually have 19 slime balls. Um, I guess I'm going to use all of them to, except one to make two slime blocks so I can make some super glue. I wonder if this stuff will repair because then, it, then it'll last forever. Uh, I don't know, but one might give it a try. Uh, so I'm going to go outside and I'm going to like put some stick them on some of this stuff and hopefully it will uh, rotate with the rest of this frame. And when I look at this, you can see it'll say it goes out to eight blocks. That might be the problem. Yeah, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. There we go. Let's just have it go all the way up to 16. That actually probably fixed it. And I, I just wasted my super glue. Uh, you know, I'm going to need it anyway. So that definitely helped a lot by just extending the reach of those radial chassis. All right, let's give it another go. There we are. That looks that looks so much better. Oh, and it goes even faster still. Okay, now let's let's back up and see how it looks. Oh, lovely. All right, so I've got a great giant turbine, which, by the way, all of the wood on this are purely decoration. The only thing that actually gives power is the sails. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't care. The, the wood was really inexpensive with all the sieving that I've got going on. And I have a couple of uh, toolboxes here. I started with the brown one, but I added a red one as well because I just started running out of space. Uh, the red one's got most of the stuff, and the brown one's got more tool types things. I don't think I'm going to need windmill bearings in there anymore. Uh, there we go. So this is like one ofs or a couple tool items. But this is where most of the stuff's going to come from, or at least what I'm, I think it will be. And when I hold the Alt key, you can see I've got a red one and a brown one. So I can choose them first, and then I can go to the items that are in each of them as I need to, which is pretty cool. And then, of course, I got my, my storage crate. Yeah. So 
let's get into some of this because I'm actually going to be doing some automation today. But before that, I think I need to like collect all of the stuff that I have in here. Ooh boy, uh, looks like I get a campfire. Oh, it even says certain resources like raw fish and driftwood can be dried on the campfire for things like leather or logs. Oh, all right. Well, I'll grab those. That's convenient. Uh, the white bed, when you die, you'll respawn. Your items will take 35% durability loss, but you will keep your inventory. And if I understand properly, your items don't break now. They'll like go to one or zero um, durability and you might have a chance of repairing them in, in the chests, which I think also repairs quicker now. Uh, yet yeah, nothing really fancy there. Scepter water infusion. Replace nearby flowing water with source water. Oh, that's curious. Uh, oak sluice. I get a couple of sponges. Ooh, I guess that's in case you get a, a water overflow into your rooms or something. And then over here, oh, I got a 10 coin. Always liking the money because that, that's good to spend in the shop. A few more nickel ingots. And then going over to the second chapter, we've got dimple of venus really <laughs> it's called magnet three efficiency one okay and it looks like an emerald pick which is sad because i i bought a netherite pick and i upgraded it i'll show you in a moment bucket of creosote oil gives me a mechanical drill Ooh, nice all right i'll grab that and then with this i get plus 100 xp i'll take that too all right, so I think that catches me up with most of those items. Yeah, see, I've got another right pickaxe. I bought it for a 20 coin. And then I took that Silk Touch enchantment and put it on there. If I had known I was going to get the Dimple of Venus here, I would have put the Silk Touch enchant on that. Okay, that Driftwood recipe now has changed. You now only get two for each one. And in a Redstone Furnace, you only get one. But when campfire cooking it, you get six. Okay, so automating that to get the maximum amount of wood is actually one way you could do things. That's pretty interesting. You can even get leather just from cooking fish. All right. All right, certain types of fish. Raw cod apparently just turns into cooked cod. This is the next project at hand. Uh, now that I've kind of sorted through my inventory, I'm looking to kind of reproduce something similar to this that is in here for the, the manual pump uh, image. So let's start with a deployer. Let's pick this up and put it down one off to the side so that when I have power coming down, it can go directly into this deployer uh, and uh, on the side of it. And then I can have multiple deployers like on the sides of it that are then working and they can all connect to each other at these uh, side connections. Okay. So this one, you can see the hand is actually like kind of glitching into the manual pump, but when powered, it'll actually go through there. Let me grab this hand crank, and then you can see it'll reach all the way through. And if I have something like, let's make this into a hopper for a moment, put it on top. I put a, a piece of dirt in there. It automatically went into this. Then when I have this going in place, it tries placing it in here. But as there's no cloth mesh yet, and there's no water being fed to it, it's not going to work. But you get the idea. There we go. It placed the dirt at the very least, and it's not going to process it until there's actual water being fed into this manual pump. And this uh, hand crank represents power that will be uh, coming in from up here. All right, and then having this come down here to this one, I can do that. And then just like the uh, the fans out here, I can actually have this come down and connect to it. And this will go at a regular standard speed i guess but it's still probably going to need to have multiple things plugging into it because i have nothing currently charging the manual pump and this is where i need a block here and then that on top and it should work just fine provided that it gets power as well and then with this i can take a couple of these parts out i can sneak right click to automatically pick up any of these things into my inventory and i can put Another one of these in place. Oh, I'm going to need to rotate that, which means one of these gets changed over into a different type. There we go. And now I've got both of these working. Uh, you can tell because this is going in and out through the back. And that is currently pumping this up, increasing the time spent or the time left. Now I just need something picking this up. There we go. So I have at least an upper picking up the output. And then I also need a hopper going into the deployer with things like dirt and gravel and such. 
All right, so I've got an input where this places stuff into the sluice, then it comes out, and it'll probably need to be sorted and so on from there. But I'm kind of thinking uh, I might have like a better inventory ses system set up over here where everything kind of outputs into it. Uh, have some like trim going around through the floorboards or something. I, I'm, I'm not entirely certain. And leaving this empty block space back here is actually really beneficial because now I can have things like trim come back here and connect to like storage drawers that are specifically locked to certain types of items. Like I could have this one just filtering dirt. I could have another one just filtering gravel. And then I could have them all uh, feeding over to the side. For instance, let's put this over here. And instead of just going straight up, I could have it go off to the side here and then be like have a line of these uh, all feeding into this one. Imagine this line here being duplicated over and over going off to the right. Yeah, that would work. And then up behind this on the back, I could also have, or the water strainers rather, being uh, used behind it and feeding down into this stuff as well. There we go, and that should just about do it, I think. Yeah, actually those just went straight in, didn't they? They sure did. And then I could have gravel over here. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm liking where this is going. I will need to make like a controller or something though. So for storage drawers, let's take a look at the recipe here. Oh, that doesn't look too bad. Stone, some regular drawers of some sort, a diamond. I've got eight of those right now. Oh, the comparators. Oh, those require nether quartz. I don't think that I have access to that yet. Hmm, so I guess I won't be able to do a controller yet, but I could have things still being sorted into like gravel and dirt or just have some filters going into these so that they're, they're automatically going into that. Perhaps with a smart shoot, which isn't too bad. I mean, a little bit of, oh, aluminum bastards. I don't know if I have any left. Um, well, andesite alloy, but the electron tube, I've yet to actually make those as well. Uh, but it's not going to be too bad for those, at least, if I decide to filter it. For now, I, I might just manual insert until I have more materials. Um, but this is looking pretty good. Now I just need to uh, make sure that it has water access. So grab a bucket, get myself a little bit of this here. And then we just kind of mine out underneath these pumps. Filling in as I go. Oh, and look at that. We've got water already going through and everything is starting to work. Oh, I forgot. I need to put the cloth mesh back in here. There we are. Nice. So I need to have stuff coming into this for now. Um, like I said, I, I think I might have to do this manually. I, I'm not going to move that setup over here just yet, though I might put a couple of drawers up on top of these with a couple different types. Considering that all of these are just like the seeds, I'm not as bothered with those. I'm more interested in the gravel and the dirt being sieved because those are going to get me a good majority of the ores. So I think I think that's what I'm going to end up doing here. Okay, so to start with, actually I'm going to face this way and place here and here. Now I already had a couple drawers. They're the, they're the two by two style, <laughs> but I don't think it really is going to make a difference here. Let's just fill that up as much as possible. And there we go. This one is fine. I'm going to take out the outputs of this other one. And then this one, I'm just going to put a bunch of gravel in. I guess it doesn't really matter because I've got these both being fed into the same thing. Yeah, that doesn't really make a difference, does it? Either way, I have a plan for this. Uh, at least I hope to. It says here, this section covers creates mechanical crafter multi-block. This setup will allow you to craft more advanced machinery and tools, including generating power and some early automation of crops. All right, so I guess this is going to be my next quest. All right, and there we go. Oh no, I just realized that doubles the recipe. Well, no harm in having double what I actually need at the moment, because I'm sure I'll need them in the future. Completes that and gets me another hub key fragment. And oh, mechanical crafters. Hey, look at that. They're going to need electron tubes as well. So that'll get me a bunch of those. All right, so I rearranged this a little bit so that it uses less of the create stuff because honestly, making uppers is just so much easier. I tried using funnels, but they didn't quite reach far enough down to pick these things up. So I've got just four uppers right now. Actually, it's, it's technically three because I just brought over this other unit that I'm not using at the moment. Uh, going up here and then it feeds everything in on that line. You can see that there's... Oops, let me see if I can get up here materials going down the line being fed into this chest via a couple chutes at the moment which actually if you want to see through them you can just right click and 
you get like this little pretty visual animation and everything fills up and then I can start processing some of my ores as I need to at the moment because this setup yeah I think I was going a little bit overboard with uh, early game stuff when I can easily condense this once I, I progress a little bit further okay so I think I've got enough here of the brass casings of making eight because each of these recipes makes two see I looked ahead this time and that should get me 16 mechanical crafters yes all right get a free building gadget which I don't think works because it probably needs power oh it's given to me fully powered that's nice that's very nice all right well let's uh, take a look at the next parts on here making a depot copper spool Depots are used to supply or receive items. Each block of the mechanical crafter has a directional arrow on it that can be rotated using the wrench. In order to craft the item, all the arrows must be directed to converge on the output. Ponder W over the mechanical crafter block to see an example. I am familiar with it and the depots, so I'm going to skip that. All right, let's see here. I forgot to read this one about the mechanical crafter. Uh, Multi-block runs on creates rotational energy. Place a single item in each crafter slot. If all slots match a recipe, it will automatically craft. If there are empty crafter slots, you can give it a redstone signal to tell it to start crafting. Ah, alternately, you can put covers on there. Uh, but yeah, I don't really want to spend the extra materials, as one has already discovered. So let's actually put a bunch of these down here and maybe... I can get this to work. Uh, let's put a bunch of these in place. And I kind of figured this would happen. This is why I made it into a stair step so I can get up here because there's a, there's a lot of these. There we go. All right, so you see how everything is currently kind of like got these arrows down and nothing's connected or anything like that. If I grab my wrench, then you can actually change where everything goes. So it all comes down and goes to the right. And then I could have it exit over here and if there's nothing for it to exit into it'll just kind of pop into the world uh, but you also need to power this so if you also notice it has like these little cogs on the side here you're going to need to have something actually plug into that so let me see if i can do so ultimately you can have something like inventory just right next to this and it should work okay uh, now let me grab some of these gearboxes here put one in this place here and then i just need a cog oh what are we out of cogs did I, I left i think i left it in this container here yes i did let me grab both of these sets because those can get those can all get put away so i put this here it is now powered uh so now i just need to figure out what i want to make with this i think the seamoth is an excellent way to go <laughs> a seamoth frame is going to be steel and frame glass and it requires 11 of these. Well, I need to get into steel. And in order to do that, looks like I'm gonna to need to get over into this area here. So we should probably start looking into the mixer. Some quest rewards are given just to encourage experimentation and don't necessarily fit into the builds being explained in the current quest chain. The mixer has multifunctionality. While it does allow you to automate shapeless crafting recipes, its true strength lies in the ability to combine crushed ores and dust into alloys. It's best to insert the ingredients into the mixer in the order shown in JEI. All right, so let's see. Making one of these isn't too bad. So far, just a bunch of andesite and some iron. Okay. All right, so let's test this thing out. Uh, so you see that we've got like a 4x4 four four crafting grid. Well, I'm going to make it a smaller recipe here. And in fact, just to make sure that this is not process, I'm going to remove that cog for the moment. And I'm going to put down a couple of these and this. And it should make the uh, the whisk but it won't because this is not a proper recipe so let's put this in place nothing happens all right so i think i need a redstone signal simple enough to make with a single button i don't know if it needs to be in this or next to it just next to it apparently there we go and then it's not very fast because i don't have it running very fast but it is now currently combining all these things. As you notice, it's flowing down this to craft these items together. Now, yes, I could have just made this on a regular crafting table, but I just wanted to test this out with the uh, activation and having empty spaces on the grid. There we go. We now have the whisk, and then it should, yep, go into the inventory. Perfect. And one mechanical mixer is now made. And this, if you notice just where I'm holding it right now, it has cogs on the side as well. So it just needs to have something hooked up to it for it to function properly. And in fact, I could have stuff run along the back or just rotate one of these things. 
For now though, let's put it back here. Uh, I just need to find a way of getting up to it. I've kind of made things a little bit tall. Ladders should do the trick. There we go, and now I can put one up here, then put this up against it, and there we go. Now this may not be fast enough though. Mixer, mechanical mixers do need a certain speed for them to actually function properly, so this might need to be uh, sped up before it'll work. Either way, I do get the reward and a spout as given. Then I need to make a basin, which is just a bunch of andesite alloy. That one was pretty easy, and we get XP. Okay, I will gladly take that. There we go, the blast bricks is what's next. But before I go to that, let's read this. Mixing ingredients will be a common theme in upcoming quest chapters. You may want to set up an assembly line for easily automating mixing recipes. The mixer must be placed over the basin once a viable recipe has been placed into the basin, and the mixer has rotational power. It will descend into the basin and begin mixing. All right, blast bricks. This is going to allow me to make steel. The multi-block blast furnace is created by placing the blast bricks in a 3x3x3 pattern and then right-clicking with your engineer's hammer. Placing iron in the input slot along with coal or charcoal will allow you to produce steel. And I get a hub key fragment. Let's get the recipe for this. Aha! This is going to be our first mixing recipe. And it looks like we just need some clay, some sand, and some of those fish turds in a mixing basin. Now you can manually insert stuff or you can have it like uh, hoppered in or you can have belts having it go into it. But for me, I think I'm going to go manually get these ingredients and see if this will even work. I think I've got the proper quantities uh, to make the, uh, is it 30, 27, uh, 27 bricks that I need. I, I don't know if this is really going to work or not, but let's toss them all in. Yeah, I didn't think so. So we're going to need to speed this thing up a bit. So in order to speed this up, we're going to do some gear ratios, starting with a large cog into a small cog, and then off the end of that, I don't know if this will let me do it from here. Uh, whee, there we go. I can put a large cog into a small cog, and you can see that that's going much faster than it originally was. So this might even be enough to have things work the way that I want them to. There we go, and hopefully everything's still going the right way. Yep, and this is fast enough now that it is mixing it up, as it says in the achievement. Excellent. So, we just wait for the output. And when it's it's done, all these particles will finish. And you'll actually have something else. Now, if I had made a depot, which actually is really cheap, I think I might be able to do that. Let's, let's make one of those. One depot. And in fact, I'm going to pick this up, put this here. The outputs usually will come out into this, but as it already had finished, the output isn't coming out of it. So I will have to manually grab it. I have 27 blast bricks that I can use to make my blast furnace. Let's get rid of this, and I'm going to put this in the corner. There we go, and as before, I'm putting another torch on top just to make sure. Bringing out my hammer, giving it a whack, and there we go. We now have a blast furnace, which sadly does not like much automation. Uh, I could put a bunch of uh, cold coke in there. In fact, what I might do is take this cold coke and see about making blocks. There we go. That, that, see now I've got a lot more storage in there. <laughs> put that in there and then I can turn um, iron into steel. At least I would hope so. Let's find out. Iron blocks or iron ingots into steel. Yep, sounds great. I don't have a lot for iron at the moment, though I do have the other process currently running. Uh, so let's start off with just three blocks of iron. And hopefully that'll get me started with a little bit of steel making. Uh, let's see how this is doing over here. Oh yeah, I've got like multiple stacks of, of iron at this point. Okay, yeah, this is, this is looking good. I even have a half a stack of uh, aluminum. And this is before it's even been increased with uh, productivity. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with how this has started, though I... I think this entire like lengthy chain doesn't even need to exist. I could have just had the that chest could have been right here. <laughs> and I think that this uh, speed up uh, thing with the mechanical mixer, I think that's just a temporary fix for the moment. I think a lot of this is temporary. I might take time but between episodes to like further refine this and uh, set up some solutions for maybe future processing of this stuff because even these furnaces over here if you look on the side they have a config where you can change the inputs and outputs 
uh, whether they automatically input them, you know, what different settings they have. So you can have these things really configurable for what they're processing and stuff. And I could even have multiples of those set up for the different types of these. I could have this massive factory of, of things going on, uh, which I'm a, I'm a big fan of. Uh, so I think I'm going to call it here because I did get a bit of automation going and I have some cleaning up to do, some refining and and yeah, it'll probably look a little bit different when you get back. I'll, I'll also have a bunch more steel processed and we can get going on uh, perhaps the first stages of making a sea moth to go explore out in the ocean without just having to drink a potion and hope it doesn't run out. <laughs> anyway, if you did enjoy this video and you'd like to see others, please feel free to click the link on the screen below or any of the links that show up. Otherwise, please give us a like, comment, subscribe, and don't be afraid to stop by on Twitch. Until next time, folks. I'll see ya.